What's up, Amber Church? I hope you guys are um, still kind of holding fast to this Lent season. I hope you're, I hope you're still um, being faithful to the thing you decided to fast from, that whatever it is, you're staying true to it. You're spending that time in prayer and devotion and uh, reading God's word and using it to impart truth and light and wisdom to your life. I hope that you were u- utilizing this season for that as we're approaching, quickly approaching Easter, by the way. Um, and so I wanted to talk today about, as we're now in the New Testament, I wanted to talk about the fast, the fast. And we see Jesus uh, fasting. He fasts several times. Um, in fact, he does a, a few, a couple 40 day fast, no food for 40 days. Uh, to our knowledge, he drank water, no food though. Uh, for 40 for 40 days that's a long time to go without food I've done that one time uh, many many years ago and um, quite an enlightening experience it is a holy experience and it is something you probably shouldn't do unless you feel uh, called of God to do it and make sure that you uh, seek the um, the advice from a physician before you attempt to do this but uh, but Jesus did this on, on several occasions one of them was right when he got into public ministry he had been baptized he came up out of the water and got to work and before he got to work he basically was led into the desert to be tempted by Satan and he had been fasting so he was weak physically but he was not weak spiritually and um, the devil was going to use anything he could to his advantage to cause Jesus to slip, to stumble, um, perhaps even to fall. So I want to read to you. These, these verses are found in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, as Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. He uses scripture uh, in this moment. Instead, uh, man is to live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. So Jesus, or Satan says, you use scripture to defeat my first temptation. So I'm going to use scripture to justify my second temptation and um, say that, hey, I've even got verses that back up that you should jump off of this uh, temple. Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And so um, Jesus is trumping his scripture and saying, you're using that out of context. That's not what he meant. Um, and this, this scripture trumps your scripture. And then again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. So now he's at the point where ego has kicked in. So at first it was just this chill, you know, hey man, you need some bread, obviously. So why don't you turn those rocks into bread? Use some of your magic stuff, make that happen. And then Jesus is like, ah, let me throw some scripture at you. So then the second time Satan's like, okay, you throw scripture at me, I'll throw scripture at you. He amps it up a notch. Let's get up on this high temple, jump off from here. God's already promised he's not gonna let anything happen to you. And so just jump and, and Jesus is like, no, we're not supposed to tempt God, test God. And so I'm not doing that, that's ridiculous. Then he amps it up even more, Satan does, and he's like, all right, worship me. Ego, pride, worship me, and I'll give you all this stuff. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to do the next 33, you know, three, three and a half more years of dealing with dumb people, miracles, death, burial, resurrection. Take all this table. I'll just give it to you. You can just have it. All you got to do, all you got to do is worship me. And uh, Jesus said to him, be gone, be gone. He wasn't playing his game no more. He said, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. And here we see that uh, Jesus is being tempted in Satan the same ways that Satan still uses to tempt us. The same tactics that we've already read about and discussed that Satan um, loves to come at us with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. And that is exactly what he went to Jesus with. And Jesus, of course, answered with scripture. 
Do you know how Jesus could answer with scripture? Because it was already in him. It was something he had already studied. It was things he already knew. Luke 2.52 says that when Jesus was a child, it refers to Jesus when he was about 13 years old. Luke 2.52 says that he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. So these texts he would read, he would study them over and over and over again. And he would find himself in the temple on certain occasions and he would open up the scrolls and he would read from them. We read about this in the New Testament. He knew the scriptures. This is how he could defend the temptation, have a defense against the temptation coming at him. And so I want to ask you, how much scripture do you have on the tip of your tongue? What can you use to defend when temptation comes your way? Now, is Satan going to come at you in a desert while you are hungry because you have fasted for 40 days? Probably not. Probably not. He's going to come at you in the form of um, a financial expense that you really shouldn't spend, but you feel like you deserve it. And then you would be able to use scripture like, I need to be content in all things, or the borrower is slave to the lender. But if you don't have those things nestled in your heart, you may find yourself in dumb debt because of an emotion that you experienced. It won't look like Satan taking you up to the highest peak and saying, throw yourself off of here and God will save you. It may look more like, um, uh, you know, you and your spouse have been fighting a lot and uh, perhaps it's run its course. Maybe... Maybe there's someone else that you should be paying attention to. In fact, all of a sudden, that person that uh, you started to work with starts to look real, real, real attractive. Maybe they even begin to look like your soulmate, uh, which is not even a thing. So we just made that up. Not even real. And so you would need to have scripture in your heart and in your mind, stuff from the Song of Solomon, where Solomon talks about the beauty of his beloved and how every aspect of, of her body is the standard by which all women are judged. Same is true of women and their husbands. Like if you are married, that man is the, um, the, the standard by which all other men are judged, that there is no one funnier, there's no one better looking. Um, there is no one more successful. There, there, there is. They, they are it for you. And guys, if you're married, there is no other woman. They, you, the woman you have is your soulmate already. There is no one else. But you don't know this unless you read the scriptures and you see these principles in scripture. Um, there's somebody that, you know, you, you're being tempted to mistreat because they have mistreated you. And you have not got scripture buried in your heart that teaches that you are to love them in the exact same way that Christ loves you. And you're like, well, that's a lot. Of course, it's a lot. But you're going to justify your bad actions toward another person if you don't have that quick on your lips and fast on your mind. So hide these words in your heart so that you may not sin against him. Again, scripture. How much time are you spending in it? How many, how many minutes? 10 minutes? Six minutes? Five minutes? How many 90 songs can you sing for me verbatim? And then how many verses can you quote for me verbatim from the text, from scripture? Isn't it true that music kind of always comes to the surface of your heart when you're experiencing something, when you're feeling something, we can draw that up and, you know, listen to certain music. We should be considering what that looks like for scripture. Jesus knew that it was so important to be able to stand up against temptation and he uh, battled it, not with a sword. Uh, he battled it with words, God's words. And so I just want to encourage you as I'm encouraging myself even now to spend time in his word so that I may have some um, weapons against the temptations that are going to come at me in, in my daily walk as we are walking in Christ likeness and seeking to be sanctified. That there is an enemy and that enemy um, can look like a lot of different things. But the way to defeat the enemy, because the temptations are always the same, right? The temptations are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the boastful pride of life. And the weapons we use to fight those things is God's word. Hide it. Hide it in your heart so that it's easily available to you. 
quick to come to your mind, to your recollection, to help you get through that next time. All right, that's it for today. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you again tomorrow as we continue our Lent devotionals. See you guys soon.